What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn about Polars which is a data frame library written in Rust but usable also in Python that is super efficient and has the potential to soon replace pandas. So let us get right into it. Alright, so we're going to take a look at Polars in this video today. And as I already mentioned, Polars is a data frame library implemented in Rust that is also available for Python and it has the potential to replace pandas uh, soon because it's basically pandas, but much faster and much more efficient. And the main source of efficiency is the fact that it's implemented in Rust, the fact that we have query optimizations that we don't have in uh, pandas, the fact that we have concurrency in Rust, which is a little bit more difficult in Python, and also things like the uh, memory format is Apache Arrow, which is only the case for pandas and pandas 2 point something. Um, and we also have a couple of other points that I want to talk about in this video today. But the main idea is that Polars is basically pandas, but much faster. And we're going to see that this is the case in this video today. Using Polars is basically the same as using pandas. There are some slight differences, but it's actually not really something new. If you're used to using pandas, you will also be fine with Polars. So we're going to start here by installing both uh, packages. We're going to say pip3 install pandas and Polars. And also NumPy if you don't have it on your system. And then we're going to import the following packages, the core Python package time, because we want to measure the time difference uh, in execution. We want to also uh, import pandas as PD. Now, Polars has also an alias, which is the convention. So import Polars as PL, and then uh, we're going to also import NumPy as NP. All right. So these are the imports. Now, I don't want to write too much code for this video. So I want to mainly copy paste stuff and run it because uh, it's not really too much about learning Polars. If you know how to use pandas, you know how to use Polars, basically. But I want to show you the code here that I have prepared for measuring some um, differences in execution time. So I'm going to copy here um, this code. And basically what we have here, don't be confused by the amount of code, it's not that difficult. Uh, we basically just generate um, random data. So we have random integers and uh, just random data in general, ABC columns here, 120,000 columns, uh, rows, sorry. Um, and then we turn them into a pandas data frame and into a Polars data frame. And we have one function called time operation, which basically measures the time it takes to get the result from the respective uh, data frame operation. So we do a start time, we do result, we do, um, we get a result, we do end time, and then we return the result and the measurement. And we're going to apply this function now onto all of these operations, you can see it's always the same operation twice, we have pandas and polars. And basically, uh, we are reading the data, we are aggregating the data. So aggregating means grouping by a column, aggregating the rest of the data with uh, a function, for example, the mean or the sum. Uh, filtering data and joining or merging. And you can see that basically, it's almost the same. We just use polars slightly differently more with functions than with dictionaries. And we're going to see also something about these functions in a second here, which is kind of useful. But the goal is now to see how much faster is polars compared to pandas when we do all these things. So I'm going to copy the rest of the code. Now I'm going to say that I want to do the following thing. I'm going to run this code here, which is basically just calling the time operations. And when I run this now, you will hopefully see a table with the benchmarks with the differences in execution time, or with the execution time, and then you can see the difference. And there you go. We have pandas and polars. And you can see that every operation in pandas takes much more time. It takes more time to read the data, more time to aggregate the data, more time to filter, and way more time to join the data frames in pandas. Um, so you can already see this is way more efficient. As I said, main reason it's implemented in Rust, not Python, and also not in some C package like NumPy that you base your code, or, or code around. This is like written in Rust and only Rust. And uh, then we have, um, as I said, query optimizations that we don't have in pandas. And we have also other aspects, uh, like the data frame uh, format is Apache arrow, which as I said, is only the case for pandas two, and not for pandas one. 
but you can see it's much, much faster and it's basically the same syntax. I'm not even sure, to be honest, if um, we are not able to use the same syntax here. Let me see. No, okay, we have to use the slightly adjusted syntax. Uh, but basically, instead of passing a dictionary here, we can just say PL column B mean instead of just passing a dictionary with B mean, but it's it's basically the same. This is some slight stuff that you need to change here to to run this. Um, all right, so that's like the basic benchmark. Now one major thing that you can do to speed up your code if you're using pandas right now, is you can use polars to avoid calling the apply function. So let me copy paste some code here again. If you have some pandas code like this, where you have a and b, and then you have a certain function that you want to apply to them, for example, something with a condition, uh, saying, for example, that the C column should be the result of taking A and B, but only if A is even, so divisible by two. Otherwise, we want to take the difference. So otherwise, we want to do a subtraction. And if it's the case, we want to do an addition. So if you want to do that in pandas, you have to do it with a lambda expression in the apply function. And the reason that's not good is because what happens here is that pandas loops over these rows sequentially and applies the function. So it's not efficient. It's not the same as calling pandas functions for this. Um, with polars, we can do the same thing like this. It's the same code, but much, much faster, much more efficient if you do that on a large scale. Because what we're doing here is we're not doing it row by row, we're not iterating over the row sequentially, we are calling these functions here. So we say PL when column a modulo two equals zero, then do this, otherwise do this alias C. This might be a little bit uh, more confusing in terms of syntax if you're new to this. But this is much more efficient, because this is now not happening on a row by row basis. It's executed much faster, it's optimized. Um, because we're actually using functions and everything can be basically expressed using this API. So the Polars API is very expressive, we can easily um, do all of the stuff that we can do in pandas apply functions, almost all of it can be done with Polars uh, functions in general. So this is a package to take a look at, I recommend you take a look at it because it is something that will definitely get larger over time. And it's definitely a great candidate to replace pandas. As of right now, however, I wouldn't say it's a replacement for pandas for a couple of reasons. First of all, pandas still has a way larger ecosystem, you have way more stuff, um, way more packages that are automatically compatible with pandas, you can feed pandas data frames into a lot of other third party packages, you can um, use pandas with a lot of big packages like PyTorch and TensorFlow. I'm not sure if PyTorch and TensorFlow already work with polars, maybe they do. But Polars is still quite new. So if you are interested mainly in compatibility, then maybe the speed issue is not that much of a big deal. Um, and also pandas is still very good for a quick data set exploration for smaller processes and so on. But this is definitely something that will be very interesting. And I recommend you take a look at it. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.